In this video, we will introduce grouping and components. Start by selecting Juan with the select tool, taking your move tool and slowly moving him over to the right hand side. And now we're going to draw a rectangle or square from the origin point, clicking up to the right, entering 10 feet, or 10 apostrophe, comma, 10 feet, enter. We're now going to multiply or copy this block two more times. To do so, we're going to select it get our move tool, press copy making sure that the plus sign is next to the cursor, click move down. As you can see in the bottom right hand corner here it'll show you how far you've actually moved down the line. At this point I am 10 feet from the beginning but I want to move so that I have five spaces, five feet in between. So I'll add an additional five feet onto there. My feet, enter. Now in this case I only press five feet which is fine because the tool is actually still active. As long as you don't press anything else, you can enter the, another distance, in this case 15, and it will move it to the space you want it. I wanted this to go over a total of 15 feet. If I wanted to change that to 20 feet, I could just keep changing the numbers around until I get the distance I want. I can also create more than just one of these by pressing X, and let's just say the number three, and that will create a total of three of these blocks. I don't want three, so I'm going to press X2. And what that two stands for is that this was the original, and we I put times two, and we created two more additional ones. Again, to do that, all you have to do is make sure you start to move something. And as you move it, you can enter whatever number you want for whatever distance, and you can keep changing that number until you get it by pressing it on the keyboard. If you wish to make more, press X, the number, and you can get those images. For our picture here, we're going to work with three blocks, and we're going to push-pull each one up 10 feet. Now these blocks are created like everything else we have have done before so you should have your 10 by 10 by 10 and what I want to do now is I would like to stack the blocks on top of one another and to stack them I have to move them so I'm going to double click this one here and I'm going to attempt to stack it on top of the first one now the important thing to remember is that when you are stacking blocks in this case you have to move them from edges or center points edges or center points it's absolutely crucial because if I grab anywhere else other than a center point or an edge there's nowhere for me to snap except maybe here and here which for the mark, most part doesn't do me any good. What I have to do is I have to get to myself to an edge. Now if I want this block to sit on top of this block well the only edge I could select would be here. I'd select it drop it. Next to move this block over I would triple click with shift move drop it over which is great. You now have your three blocks together just how you want it to. The only problem now is if these blocks are connected like such they cannot be separated from one another. You cannot actually select one of these blocks because two clicks selects a side which if you go to move distorts it. Three clicks even selects the whole object. So this is a problem because we can no longer put these blocks together. Given the reference of Legos, if each of these was the Lego it would be impossible to pull them apart making for a pretty boring Lego set. There is a way to get around this however. Let's take this whole block, select it, and click from your endpoint and move it back. Let's move it back 20 feet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another 10 by 10 block I'm going to push pull it up for 10. Now let's actually make this one look like a Lego. Let's go to the under underside. Do a small offset of say 1.5 feet. And we're going to move up and kind of shell it out. 
press X. Sorry, so let's see how high I go. Let's put this at a distance of nine feet. Finding my midpoint. Hovering. We'll enter a radius of this for this Lego. We'll do it three feet. And we'll push pull this up. Ten inches. So there you have your little makeshift. Actually, I can make this twelve inches. I'll go up another two inches. Nope, down another one. So it's at 11 inches from the get-go. Now, we know that this particular block is just like these, and we know if we stack it, it's going to stack just like these and not be able to be separated. Well, that's pretty boring. If you've got a Lego set, you can never separate it. So instead, we're going to triple-click it. We're going to right-click it. Make it a group. Notice that it's a group. You have these lines all the way around it. With one click, instead of selecting a face, I'm actually selecting the entire Lego piece itself. As opposed to if I select something that's not in a group, I can only select one face at a time. There are a couple other different things. With a Lego block like this, grouped together, I can't draw on it with my offset tool. I can draw here. I'm able to draw on the face of it but this is not actually connected to the block. Instead, it's just kind of floating on top of it. When you have something that's grouped, you cannot do anything to it unless you're in edit mode, which we'll get to in a moment. But first, let's stack this like the other two. Because it's a group, I now don't even have to select it three times. I can just get my move tool, start bringing it over at 10 to there. Now let's go 15 feet. Oops, control Z that. Let's go 20 feet. So we have the proper spacing. Now, let's copy this, bring it up to the top. Now, if we had to stack or unstack these Legos, we could do so very easily. They're not connected like these and can be moved. If you wanted to change part of this Lego, and we do because we want to color them, you can color a Lego when it's in a group, or I'm sorry, you can color any group by just taking the default tray and clicking on it once. However, that's coloring the entire block. Sometimes that's useful, sometimes not. The way we're going to do it for now is instead of coloring the entire block, we're going to triple click and what you notice is that we go into what I call edit mode, whereas the everything not in the group is grayed out. When you're in edit mode of something, whatever's inside that blue bubble you open up is now what can be changed. Now you can do an offset here. Now you can change this block however you want. But you cannot change it if you are not in edit mode. And again, edit mode is represented by this dotted line and by the fact that there are blocks all around it that are grayed out. You're now free to color this whatever sizes you want, however you want. So this may be a little bit tedious to do all the colors, all the same sizes. So in this case, since it's only red, maybe you would come outside of the group and just take the red and color it as such. Now let's go back and make another alteration to our files. I'm going to move one back just a little more. I'm going to move to my top down view so I can more easily select all of these. And with my move tool, I'm going to move them back along this axis for 20 feet. And I will go ahead and build another Lego. Let's 
see what these diameters were. I forget already. Six feet in diameter. So I have a six foot diameter. Oops. Six foot diameter, which means I have to enter it as a radius. So half of that would be a three foot diameter circle here. I can use infer to the other ones that I already have. I'll go my wireframe. If I double click, my same distance is there. And then I'll push pull and infer up to the block inside here. You can see how all these objects and shapes are now really starting to come together and you should be getting a better feel of the tools. For this block, I'm going to make this block after I triple click at a component. You can name this anything you want as long as you understand where it is in the drawing if you need to come back to it. I'm going to name it yellow and I'm going to create it. You notice that it is also highlighted blue just like the components are, just like the groups are over here. And it acts very much the same way. You can't draw on the outside of it unless you're in edit mode. You can color the whole thing on the outside if you wish, which we're not going to do. And in order to change it, you're going to double click it. And now you're inside of edit mode. And this will let you make whatever changes you want to do, which is fine. We will change this block to a color of yellow. An easiest way to do the whole color at one time is to triple click. And there you have your block. Now once again, let's copy this block. We'll do 20 feet. Enter. Then let's press X for times 2 to get 3 of these. Now we'll go back. I'll lock them together. And you have your blocks. The blocks can now be moved all over the place independently of one another and you can play with your Legos with multiple objects. Let's control Z back to here. Now the last point here is that grouping and components are different for one main reason and that reason is when something is a component, an object is a component and is copied from another component that changes how that component works. If I triple click here and you'll notice I'll click on different faces, you'll see that once I click the face of one, they all highlight. That's because they're all going to be mirror images of one another, and they all will color, change size and shape together as long as they're in edit mode. So once in here, any size, any shape will be colored. This is an advantage when you're going to be using the same object more than one time. Now notice once I colored inside of the group, I was, I was double clicked inside of this component, I can no longer just color the outside because on the inside, on edit mode, I changed the color which is where it has to be changed. It's very important to realize when objects are locked and when they're not. If you can click an object and a line or a face selects, it is not a group, it is not a component. If you click on an object and it highlights like this, it could be a group or a component. The difference is, does it change? And then if it is a group or it is a component, when you highlight or select it, the entire object will in fact change like all the other ones. Once these blocks are individualized, you can really start to create some large objects and shapes relatively quickly. If I start mixing and matching here, or if I copy the first block here, and I select some of the red ones, making sure only to grab the points in the corner and snapping even the one that's aren't components. I'm sorry, make sure you make sure you leave a copy of each of these for the assignment. So we'll select all these again. Oops, 
same thing here. Or we can make another copy of these group, this group. And I can change this color. Now remember, I can change this color without all them changing because this is its own. These are just components. I'm sorry, these are just groups. They're not locked together. So one does not change them all. The important thing here is to keep all of them grouped together. All of them stuck together. So highlight all of them. You'll notice it gets difficult to highlight all of them at one time. So a little trick you can do is you can take a uh, three individual groups, one, two, three, and if you select all of them and then make another group, you now have an additional group, and inside of this group are the three smaller ones. So try not to get confused. If you double-click here, you have your three blocks, which can be moved individually. Okay, you can also go into edit mode to change them. But now that they are just one group like this, it is easier to grab edges and stack them together. I'm going to take the three red, right click them, make them a group, and the three green make them a group. Now you can begin to copy the whole thing. Figure out what will match up where. Once you get to this point, save your file, take a picture exactly as you see here, and submit it to the Dropbox. Once you are done submitting, come back to the file so that we can play around with some additional features. Okay, now that your assignment is in the Dropbox, let's do the following. We have how many groups in this triangle? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten groups of three. Ten groupings of three that will all move together. Inside of each of those groupings is another three. So probably about thirty total. Let's select this entire group. Carefully to only select the lines in the group. Group it. And now let's have some fun with our copy tool. Let's take our copy move tool, move it over slightly, and let's actually just stack it to the none directly next to it. So essentially moving it 10 feet, and then let's multiply that or press times 10. We have a Lego feature. Now, if we select this entire shape, okay, so now you have all these groups highlighted, we can move it, copy it straight up, let's say for about uh, roughly 150 feet. Okay. Now, with everything still highlighted, which is important, if you accidentally clicked off and it's not highlighted, you want to go back and make sure the entire thing is highlighted. With it highlighted, let's look at our side view. And turn my camera to the parallel perspective so we're looking like this. And at this point, I'm going to want to group this whole thing together again so that all those pieces are one and do the same thing down here make sure you're in the view parallel projection 